well then, uh, <laughs> Chiefs out here making moves. Apparently, you know, a big, a big, you know, theme of this previous Super Bowl for the Chiefs was the lack of protection of Patrick Mahomes. He did not have any protection. His offensive line was terrible. One of the worst we've seen in quite some time. They did not protect Patrick Mahomes at all. So how did the Chiefs react to this situation in the offseason? Well, let's just get rid of two of his offensive linemen. That's right. The Chiefs have released both Eric Fisher and Mitchell Schwartz. Wow. They released both of these guys. I guess Mahomes is just going to be out there running for his life. Then again, it's Patrick Mahomes. He's the greatest quarterback we've ever seen. He's the future GOAT. He's far surpassed anything we've ever seen. He's leagues above everybody else playing the game right now. Nobody can compare. After all, he did win that Super Bowl by himself. Like, it's not like the team as a whole came together and played well in the fourth quarter, which led to the comeback. Nah, Mahomes did it by himself. So he'll be able to carry this team even with even without an offensive line. He's got this. He don't need an offensive line. He don't. He's Patrick Mahomes. He'll be great. And at the end of the day, if he doesn't, well, it don't even matter. He'll just be running for his life like Russell Wilson does on a daily basis. Who needs an offensive line? Okay, with that nonsense out the way, <laughs> let's let's actually keep it real and, you know, get back on the situation. Um, You know, this decision by the Chiefs to get rid of these guys, I'm not going to lie. I was a little surprised, you know, <laughs> considering what we saw happen in the Super Bowl to get rid of these two guys, are you starting offensive linemen to get rid of them? I don't know, man, that that definitely did surprise me. But the more I look into the situation, the more I start to understand why the Chiefs will do that. For one, they're over the cap and releasing these two guys will help them save 18 million, which will dramatically drop them down. I believe by doing this, they're now dropped down to being only 4 million over the cap. So they're trying to get some cap space. This makes this just makes sense by doing this. And two, when you look at the situation, Fisher, um, he's coming off an Achilles injury towards Achilles. He's not playing next season. There's a good chance he probably wouldn't even be able to come back until late. At the end of the season, probably around like late December, early January, if he's lucky. So, I mean, keep him on, keeping him on the team, especially since he's on the older side of the age and just like tearing it, dealing with his injury and probably not going to be able to play for much of next season. It wouldn't really help the Chiefs if, you know, they kept him. So it makes sense for Fisher to be cut. As for Schwartz, again, I'm not a Chiefs fan. I don't know much about this. So I listen to what I hear from the Chiefs fans regarding the situation, but from what I've heard, there have been talks about Schwartz potentially retiring because he's on the wrong side of 30 and he's kind of been having back injuries and stuff like that. So there is a belief that Schwartz is going to retire soon. And if that's the case, then it actually makes sense because I'm like, wait a minute, Schwartz is an all pro tackle. I understand he's injured right now as well. Both him and Fisher are injured, so I understand, but He's an all-pro tackle. Are they really willing to give him up? Like, do they not want to surround... Do they really want to take that away from Patrick Mahomes? But no, if, if that's really the case of him... If there, of there just being questions of him potentially retiring and they're not sure. And he's been dealing with these injuries and it doesn't look like he's the same player as before. Then it makes sense for the Chiefs to do this. So, if that's really the case, then when I look at the situation, yeah, it makes sense for them. Not to mention, I'm sure the Chiefs have a plan. If you've been paying attention to the draft, you would understand that this upcoming draft is loaded with offensive linemen. They're like just loaded with offensive linemen. So this would definitely be a great opportunity for them to retool their offensive line via the draft. Because when it comes to drafting linemen, you don't really see a lot of them getting drafted early on in the draft. Like they, they start getting drafted mostly around like, the second half of the first round, and then they get go. They just go down to the second and third round. The second and third round, you see a lot of linemen getting drafted. So, like, it starts at the second half of the first round, and then goes into the second and third round. So, that works to the Chiefs' favorite because they're in the second half. They're one of the lower teams in the first round. So, this definitely works to their favor, and it makes sense. So, I mean, yeah, they'll probably just have to retool their offense via the draft. Which, I mean, I don't think they're going to have a problem with that. When you look at the Chiefs, they don't really have a lot of weaknesses. On offense, the only real issue really has to deal with the offensive line, which is probably what they're going to address 
via the draft. Defensively, there's not much there. There are some issues that could definitely be improved on in some positions that can be improved on. But really, overall, defense it has some issues. They'll probably be addressing that as well in the draft. But their main focus in this upcoming draft is most likely going to be fix this offensive line. Fix the offensive line. We'll be good to go. We'll be able to make another Super Bowl run. So that's probably their main priority. So getting rid of these two guys, yeah, it makes sense. Makes sense. The more I start to think about it, and based on what I'm hearing from Chiefs fans and just looking at the reports and stuff, yeah, it makes sense. With Fisher just not being, most likely not going to play in the 2021 season, and with Swartz looking to potentially retire, I don't even know about that. That's what I'm hearing from Chiefs fans. But with that being the case and rumors about him retiring, yeah, it makes sense for them to get rid of these two guys. Not to mention, they'll save $18 million in cap space. They need that right now because they're still over the cap. So, yeah, this, this is not exactly a bad move. Obviously, without that whole context and everything that's being known here, obviously you look at that and you'll just react and be like, man, they really don't want to... They just don't want to... They don't want to protect Patrick Mahomes at all. Like, you saw what happened in the Super Bowl. The man got no protection, was running for his life the whole day, and you choose to respond... By getting rid of two of your best offensive linemen? Is that really the right choice? Obviously, everybody about to clown them. But again, as you get more and more information about this, we'll see. Um, you you kind of just come, you just look at the situation, look at the Chiefs situation, look at the situation regarding both these two who are injured, and it starts to make more sense. So um, we'll just we'll just have to see what happens with this. I again I trust Kansas City especially when it comes to their offense. I'm sure they do have a plan as to what they're doing, and I'm expecting them to really be looking to retool their offense via this upcoming draft just because there's so many great linemen in this draft. It's loaded with linemen. It would, bro, there's a lot of good tackles here, so they'll probably be looking to retool their offensive line through the draft, which makes sense. But yeah, um, there you definitely have people that's going <laughs> to... Definitely be saying some of the things I said and definitely clowning them at some point. Like, well, you know, Patrick Mahomes is the greatest quarterback beyond belief. He don't need an offensive line. Or they'll probably be saying like, yeah, Patrick Mahomes about to be running for his life more than Russell Wilson. He ain't got no O-line. They're going to be making all sorts of jokes. But at the end of the day, we're in March right now. Okay. We're in March. They still have plenty of time. Draft's not even here. Free agency hasn't even started yet. It's coming up soon. So... I believe next week. So, like, we'll they'll, they'll be fine. They'll be fine. Chiefs have a plan that they're going to follow. They're going to find a way to retool this offense. Offense. Retool this offensive line. And they'll just keep it moving. Because, you know, that's just what they got to do. In terms of their cap situation, I don't know. They're going to have to figure that out. I'm sure they're going to be making some other moves. Either they're going to have to restructure some people's contracts. Or they're just going to have to cut somebody else. So, uh, we'll probably be looking out for that. You know. Obviously, people are going to look at Mahomes' contract and say that's a big reason for their cap problems. But is this, I mean, right now, no, I don't. Is it? Is it now or 2022? Or, isn't it till like 2023 where his contract really starts to make an impact on their cap space? So, like, I'm looking at it like it doesn't hit this upcoming offseason or even next upcoming offseason. I believe it starts hitting 2023, but I don't really know. I, I don't remember his contract. I saw it last year. I don't remember the contract he has right now, but like, yeah, the, the money he's expected to make doesn't really kick in until like 2023, I believe. So that's not the reason they're having issues with their cap space right now. There are other issues for that. Mahomes' contract has no effect on their cap space this offseason. So, yeah, they're just trying to make cap space. But overall, yeah, they should, they should be fine. They, they got a plan. They definitely got a plan. You don't release two of your starting tackles if you don't have a plan to retool the offensive line. They, they definitely have a plan for that. They're going to be fine. But yeah, there's not much other to really say about this situation. Again, if Swartz ends up retiring, then again, it'll make more sense that they did release him. And as for Fisher, again, that Achilles tear, he's just not going to be able to play. He's not going to be able to play this upcoming season. He's out. He's out. So like at this point, it wouldn't be beneficial for the Chiefs to just keep him here, especially when they're having cap issues this offseason. It wouldn't make sense to keep him here if he's not even going to play for much of this upcoming offseason. So it makes sense to get rid of him. And for Swartz, if, again, we'll see how that goes. But the more I look at this situation, the more it's starting to make sense as to why they made these decisions. When you just look at it from the outside, 
you're going to laugh at them. But when you look at it from the inside and see how all this situation is going, you're going to start to think, okay, makes a little bit more sense. And you look at the draft and say, all right, makes more sense. There's it's a loaded draft. They're probably going to retool the offensive line via the draft. Now, if we get to the draft and they don't do that, now we can reopen this discussion. But we'll see what happens with that. With that being said, that is all I got, and I'm out of here, man. Peace.